Welcome to Yellowstone Season 5, Episode 1 and 2, Discussions and Predictions. In this series, we walk you through key points of each episode, and I also make some predictions of my own. Let's go! And we start on episode one after John Dutton has won his campaign for governor. Next scene, we get a flashback of Beth and Rip, and Beth is asking Rip if he wants to take her out before she leaves to college tomorrow. While at the bar, Beth and Rip get into an argument because Beth ends up showing cleavage to get her drink due to not having an ID. I'm assuming she is not the age of 18 yet to drink, as we all know. In that time period, you only had to be 18 to drink. Then the next scene, we see Beth and all of the boys returning back from the bar while Rip is waiting towards the end of the driveway. Once they hop out of the car, Beth is making out with a different ranch worker, and Rip is watching all of this go down, so... Because Rip and Beth got into an argument at the beginning of the night, Beth decided that he sh- she should mess around on him and ends up doing so right in front of Rip, which is pretty crazy. Then in the next scene, we see John Dutton getting sworn in for governor. But before this happens, he has a long pause where it seems like he could be either having health issues or possibly second thoughts. This is interrupted by Beth coming in and saying, Daddy, and he uh, starts to get swore in. So that's something you should note. Could he possibly be facing more health issues on top of what he already had or possibly having second thoughts as becoming governor? Either one really does not matter because he ends up getting sworn in as governor. Right after John Dutton is sworn in, he gives a short speech, which will become his first campaign moves. He claims he is going to raise sales tax 6% for non-residents. He will also make people pay for vehicle registration fees, at least for non-residents. And he also is going to double taxes for every non-resident. Seems like he is trying to make people who are not from there get out of there quickly as he only wants residents to seek the benefits of Wyoming, apparently. We then see Jamie urging John Dutton to reconsider canceling the airport plans and the ski resort plans as it could bring in million dollars of revenue to a ranch that currently is losing millions of dollars per year. Then, in the next scene, we see Monica calling Casey, saying that she thinks the baby is coming and that she needs him to meet her at the hospital. He then says that he doesn't want her driving, he's going to come pick her up, which Monica responds she doesn't think she has time and doesn't think that he would make it in time. So Casey tells her to go ahead and start driving, he's going to send an ambulance on the way of where she will be coming from. Then while on the way to the hospital or to meet the ambulance, we see Monica starts to struggle in pain and starts to swerve and not paying much attention to the road as she is in pain with pregnancy cramps. We then see her look up and there's a buffalo standing in the middle of the road as well as another truck traveling in the opposite direction. And then instantly they all collide with each other and the scene ends. Then in the next scene, we see John Dutton pulling up to the hospital where everyone from the ranch seems to already be there. He sees Tate outside of the hospital room crying, saying that he had a brother. Well, at least he did have a brother for at least an hour. After that sad moment, he looks up to John Dutton and then explains that they named him John. And that is how episode one ends for season five, with everyone standing in the hospital with a very sad moment as Monica is laying in the hospital bed and her husband, Casey Dutton, is laying on top of her. 
So just a few quick thoughts about episode one. It's a little slow, but it also does a good job of picking up where it left off. Everyone's looking older as far as Tate. The youngins are definitely looking older. And then we have a really sad moment at the very end where we find out that the kid was named John, presumably after John Dutton. So let's go ahead and dive on into episode two to get through that review. Episode two starts off with a banger as it starts off with the wrecked car. It shows Tate stuck in the car struggling to free himself. After he eventually gets free, he is outside of the wreckage looking for his mom. He sees someone dead in a field and thinks it's his mom at first, but then hears his mom screaming she's on the other side of the road. She is beaten up pretty bad, but she is alive. In the next scene, we see the kid that Rip and Beth have sort of adopted. Carter gets to ride with the big boy today as Rip tells him to saddle up the horse. He's going out riding today. In the next scene, we see John Dutton asking who his chief of staff is, and they bring in some random guy he has never seen in which he fires him on the spot and instantly makes Beth his new chief of staff. Now, I'm sure that doesn't surprise anyone there, as that is very John (laughs) Dutton-like. Then we see John Dutton holding a press conference about the Paradise Valley Committee. And then, against Jamie's best wishes, we see John Dutton make an announcement that he is officially canceling the state funding for all of the Paradise Valley Committee's adventures, including the airport and the ski resorts. And then we see the Paradise Valley Committee talking about how they need to cancel this action and get back at John Dutton. Several of them also make a comment that Jamie, which is John Dutton's son, he doesn't look very happy like he should now that his dad is governor, which makes me think, that they are going to try and take a play on that and probably either offer Jamie a lot of money or some sort of position on their committee that would give him some sort of power. We have seen this in the past, so hopefully Jamie stays strong and sticks with the Dutton family. And then we see while riding his horse, Carter, the young boy that Rip and Beth have adopted, his horse hits a hole and it sends both of them flying. We quickly learn that Carter's arm is broken and soon after that learn that the horse has to be put down because his leg is broken and it will never heal. We then see a meeting with John Dutton talking to other state officials where he tells them that he has their word if they just go with the plan they will be in office for another term. They said, well why didn't you tell us this from the get-go? Shake his hand and agree to go with him canceling the Paradise Valley Committee plans. Then another key point in this second episode, we see the ranchers who have been hunting wolves who have been causing havoc on the ranch. We see them shoot down the wolves, and as they approach the wolves, they see they have orange GPS trackers around their neck, which is not a good sign because they are federally protected wolves which means that they could face great penalties for killing these wolves, and they must hide that they have just been killed on the Dutton Ranch. And in the next scene, it shows all sorts of animals dead. Fish in the river, there's dead calves and cow, there's even some dead elk. And then we see that there is construction going on at the Dutton Ranch. They are building what seems to be cell phone towers. And then we see that this is actually a flashback as a young John Dutton walks up to them after flying in on his helicopter and says that what they are doing is killing his calf. So he basically tells them that he doesn't care what the state says is okay. They can't do that because whatever they're spraying seems to be killing his calf. And then he gets a business card to see who's behind this and on the card it says Dick Weller construction and he says of course 
and then walks out, gets back in his helicopter, and angrily flies off. And then, in the next scene, we see some of the Dutton cowboys destroying the cell phone tower, and then we also see them attacking the man in charge of the construction build, and they are actually spraying him with the same chemicals that they were spraying on the river. So he then wakes up from being unconscious with these chemicals sprayed all over him, runs to a shower and starts spraying it off. But we can only assume what's going to happen to him as it also happened to the animals. So we learn even at a younger age, John Dutton is willing to go to any length to protect his ranch. And then in the very last scene of episode two, Rip finds out about the wolf situation and says that they have to move the collars now. If they stand still for at least 12 hours, a distress signal will be sent out and the exact GPS location will be shared. So they need to figure out a way to get rid of these collars where it doesn't look like they died on the Dutton Ranch. So we see them putting these collars loosely over logs and small sticks and letting them go into the river. Rip then explains you want them to be loose on the log so they'll eventually fall off. And he sends them down the river. In theory, they won't fall off until they are off the Dutton Ranch. But in a plot twist at the very last moment of episode two, we see one of the collars get loose and stuck much quicker than expected and it's presumably still on the Dutton Ranch. So this will probably bring more heat to the Dutton Ranch and future problems for the ranchers. And that sums up Yellowstone Season 5, Episode 1 and 2, Discussions and Predictions. Don't forget to like this page and share our videos. And let us know in the comment section what you thought of the season so far. Do you think it started off slow? Do you like the season? And I also want to know some of your predictions below as well. We look forward to seeing you for the next episode, Reviews of Yellowstone Season 5.